All right, hi, and welcome back to our Power BI Custom Visuals course. Today, we're going to be looking at the Enhanced Scatter Chart. Now, the Enhanced Scatter Chart is a great new visual that it will allow you to go a little bit beyond what you can do with the traditional scatter chart. So things that this can support that you can't do in the traditional scatter chart are things like data-driven images. So you'll see I have a bunch of bubbles on the chart on the right-hand side. Well, maybe I don't want to see bubbles or shapes. I actually prefer to see images. You could do things like that with the Enhanced Scatter Chart where you can replace those shapes with actual images. Uh, you can also do things like change the type of shapes. So with a traditional scatter chart, you just have bubbles. It's basically like a bubble chart. Well, with the enhanced scatter chart, you can actually change those shapes so that you can have things like arrows or triangles or diamonds or stars. You can have all sorts of different shapes that you can include as part of the enhanced scatter chart. You can also make the color. So the color you see on my screen, I have kind of a blue, a black, and a red. I can make those colors dynamic or actually based off the data that I have inside of the data set. So you'll see how to do that in this video as well. In addition to those things, you can also make a background image. So on the background of the scatter chart, you can have an image. By the way, you, you can actually do that in the traditional scatter chart as well. But there's some fun things you can do with it here on the enhanced scatter chart that we'll take a look at. All right, so the enhanced scatter chart is actually published and made by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look at where we can go get it, download it, import it into the Power BI desktop, and then I have a couple examples on how you can use it. All right, first things first, let's make sure we can go ahead and download the Enhanced Scatter Chart. You'll do that by going to the Visuals Gallery, and you'll find that if you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that'll take you to the gallery that I'm looking at right now. It'll redirect you to the site that I'm at. And if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll find the Enhanced Scatter Chart, which is this one right here. This is the one that we're going to be using. And when you select the Enhanced Scatter Chart, select the Download Visual. You can also look at some of the samples of code as well. But I want you to go ahead and download the visual and save it in some kind of central location so that way we can start using it together. Now, go ahead and download that. Again, there are samples if you'd like to look at them. All right, so let's go ahead and take this now back over to the Power BI desktop. I'll flip back over to my desktop, Power BI desktop app, and let's walk through a couple examples of how to use this. So I have a couple different examples that we're going to do. This is actually two different examples on how to use the enhanced scatter chart. The first one, we're going to actually show you how you can make the images dynamic. The second one, I'll show you how to do things like make a background image and also make the colors dynamic using the enhanced scatter chart. So in the first example, what I'd like you to do, if you're going to follow along, is go ahead and go up to the Get Data section. And what we're going to do in this first example is actually go get data from a website called Alexa. Now, I've actually downloaded this data already for you. It's inside of an Excel spreadsheet to make it easy for us. And so if you go to Get Data and select Excel, you're going to be pulling in some data or some information from a file that you should see a link to on the bottom of this video called Alexa Data. Now, Alexa is a website where you can get all sorts of information about visits at websites, how the websites are performing, how many bounce rates they have, how many total visits they have, that sort of thing. So we're going to select the Alexa data. And what we'll find inside this data source is all of the top 10 websites visit, visited by the United States. Who's visiting the most websites? Really looking specifically at United States, which websites are most often visited. So I'll select the top sites spreadsheet that I have inside that workbook. You can see Google, Facebook, YouTube, as you would imagine, the most typical websites you probably think of when you think of the internet. And I'll select the total sites spreadsheet and hit load to get that data now into my data model. All right, now that we have the data, we're ready to go ahead and import the custom visual, the enhanced scatter chart. To import the custom visual here, you'll come up to the visualization section you'll, where you see the little ellipses and it says import from file. And I'll select import from file and tell it that, yes, I want to go ahead and import a custom visual here. The custom visual that we're looking for, you'll find on uh, wherever you just downloaded it, actually. So you downloaded it, go find it wherever you saved it. I have mine all saved into a single folder here that's easy to find. And we're looking for the enhanced scatter chart. So I'll select the enhanced scatter chart here and then click open. So now we've imported successfully the enhanced scatter chart. I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And then I'll drop the enhanced scatter chart inside my visualizations designer here or the designer pane. And I'll make it a little larger so we can actually see what we're working with here. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is bring in some of the fields that we have from our top sites data set you see on the left hand side, or excuse me, the right hand side. I'll go ahead and start by selecting things like the bounce rate of the websites, things like the daily page views per visitor, and also this last one here, this daily time on site. So how much time is actually spent on each of these websites? You can see initially it brings back a single value here. It does have a tool tip, but you can see the values of what I've just selected. But what I'd like to do is I want to see multiple categorical data here for each of the sites that I have in my data set. 
So rather than looking at just this one, what I'll do is instead is I'll select the site name here in the data set, and that will give me a new bubble or a new category for each of the different websites that we're analyzing here. Now, one of the things that you may want to do is if you don't want to see these all using the same exact color, what you can do is you can change where the site name is located in the field list here. I can change it from being underneath the details section to move to the legend section, and you'll see it gives me a legend of each of the values, and it has a new color for each of those websites. So that's a nice way to be able to visualize this. Now, the other thing that we can do in addition is we can actually look at shapes, and we can analyze our values here as different shapes. Now, you'll notice inside my data set, I actually have a field here called shape. And you'll notice also in the properties of this visualization, there are a ton of different ways that you can customize it. You'll see things like color saturation, customized color, which we'll look at a bit later. You'll see the shape property, which is the one that we're going to manipulate here in a moment. You can also make it so that there's an image. Rather than looking at a shape here of a circle, you can actually have an image that's visualized. You can also change the rotation, so it'll actually rotate the image or the shape if you wanted to. I have properties also for things like backdrop, the X and Y axis. So there's a lot of custom properties that you get with the enhanced scatter chart that you don't have in the traditional scatter chart that is provided with Power BI. So what I'd like to do in this case is I want to take this shape field that I have and I'm going to drag and drop it into the shape property of the visualization. So if I do that, you'll see I actually get shapes that are different for each one of the websites that I have in my data set. Now, how is it doing this? How am I getting a different shape for each? Well, it's actually an indicator in the data set itself. So let me show you the data set itself here for a moment. If I flip back over to the data view here, which we haven't looked at yet, but if I flip over to the data view on the left-hand side, you'll see what the data set looks like. It has things like the site name, the bounce rate, the page views, the time on each site. But it also has this last column here called shape, which basically has a different number indicator that returns back a different shape for each number. So a 0 means a circle, and a 1 means something else, and a 2 means something else as far as a different type of shape that's returned back. And you could obviously change those in your data source, or whatever your data source is, should indicate what type of shape you want to show. So based on the indicator of the number, we're seeing a different visual here in the report view, like a diamond or a star or a square, based on those numbers. Okay, so just note that's all driven by the data itself. Now there's a few other things that you might want to customize in the enhanced scatter chart for this first example. You can see that you can customize things by going underneath the formatting section here. If I select the paintbrush, that'll allow me to format this. And as I scroll down, you'll see there's a ton of different properties in here that I can play around with. There's a lot to work with. In this case, what I'd like to show you is things like how you can add an outline to the visual. So we have different shapes, and if I wanted to make it a little bit more defined, I can flip on this outline property here that's on the very bottom, which is turned off. If I flip that on, you'll notice very subtly, but it puts a little outline around the visual so it's a little bit more bold. It stands out a little bit more, especially when you have them on top of each other, like you see here with the X and the plus sign. The other thing that you should note here is if you wanted to, you could also come here to manually adjust the colors. You'll see here that underneath the legend section, excuse me, not the legend section, the data color section, if I wanted to, I could come through here and manually modify the colors. We're going to actually show you how you can make the colors data driven here in a few moments. But if I wanted to, I can change Google from being yellow to something like purple if I wanted to, and you can notice the change up here in the top. So just note that you can actually come in here and change those. I'm actually going to flip that back to yellow. I like that a little bit more because there's already a purple in here. All right, so this is an example of one type of enhanced scatter chart. We're using dynamic shapes. What I'd like to do in this next example is show you how you can do things like dynamic colors and also how you can put a background image inside of the visual as well. So let's do a new data set for this new example. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and create a new report page. We're going to be looking at something completely different. So here's, here's your background to this example. I work for a large company, a company that does and has fueling stations, gas stations, basically. And what I'd like to do is be able to plot out which of the pumps. So as you think of a fueling station, when you go to actually fill up your gas tank, you have multiple pumps you can choose from. I want to be able to highlight which one of the pumps is actually the most used. And that'll help me for things like maintenance. It'll also help me for doing things like cross promotion, where I put some kind of end cap next to that pump so I can get more uh, visibility in the products that I have inside and encourage people to actually come inside of my service station. That's their background. Let's actually walk through the data itself. So let's go import some data. We'll come up to the get data section here again. We're going to be importing from Excel once again. And in this one, we're going to be looking for a data set called gas station traffic. So you should have that as uh, downloadable from the link below. 
I'm going to go ahead and select gas station traffic and hit open. Now with that data set selected, I will select next the pump usage. That's the spreadsheet that I have inside of there. And you can see that there are some coordinates that we're going to plot out on a map or an image of my gas station. I can also see the usage here or the traffic at each gas pump, the name of the gas pump, and then I'm going to show you how you can actually make the colors dynamic as well based on what's inside the data. All right, so let's go ahead and load this into the data set or into the data model. So I'll hit load. It's now brought in a new data set into the field list here called pump usage. And so what we can do now is bring this into a new enhanced scatter chart. So I'll go ahead and select the enhanced scatter again. I'll make this a little larger on the screen once again so we can get a good look of it. And we'll start by going ahead and bringing in the location as well as the X and the Y coordinates on the map. Now you can see here very lightly that there is a circle indicated on each of the locations of the X and Y coordinates that are part of my data set. Now what I'd like to do here is make this a little bit more interesting. What I'd like to do is go ahead and bring in my background image now. And so what I'll do to bring in the background image is I'm going to go over to the paintbrush a little earlier than we would normally do. I'm going to go over to the format paintbrush and I'm going to go down to where you find the backdrop property here. So you'll see there's a backdrop property here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and expand that property and paste in this URL. This URL, this image URL will also be available and a link that you'll find from our site here as well where the video can be found. And I'm going to make sure that that comes through. There you go. You can see that's actually a gas fueling station here. And what I'd like to do with this now is actually set the data points for the X and Y coordinates a little better. First of all, you'll notice that the image doesn't take up the entirety of this box. So you may want to readjust this some. You likely would want to do that property that we've seen in the past. If you've watched any of our other videos, this locked aspect ratio here, our locked aspect, you may want to turn that on. So that way, as you resize the image, it keeps the aspect ratio set. That's one property you may want to consider doing. I'll go ahead and turn that on in this case. But what I'd really like to do here is I want to make sure that my data points map on here correctly because what you'll notice is if, if I check off, and you can do this with me, if I check off the traffic property here right now, you'll notice that the bubbles that appear on here aren't perfectly on each of the gas pumps. And the reason why is because the X and Y coordinates are taking up a certain amount of space that don't necessarily map up with the space that I have inside my data set. So what I want to do is I actually want to go back over to the formatting section. Again, the first thing we did there was we checked off traffic and that changed the visual here. It actually made it so that the size of the bubble represents how much traffic we have. But what I'd like to do now is make sure that these data points are landing on the right locations, basically. So to do that, you'll go back over to the formatting section here where the paintbrush is. You'll scroll down to where you see the X axis and the Y axis here. And you'll expand each one of those. I'll start with the X axis first. And I'm going to change the start location to be a zero. So we're going to start with zero location. And I'm also going to make it so that the ending data point here is at 50. So go 50 points in, and that's going to map our section here a little better. Now that's just for the X coordinates. Now if we want to adjust the Y coordinates, we're going to do the same thing. So my data points assume that I'm starting at zero and ending at 50 to be able to map these out correctly. And you'll see once I do that, it looks like all the data points here map correctly on each of the gas pumps. So it looks like that's done correctly here now. Now there's a few other things we can do. If we wanted to, we could add data labels on here. If I go back over to formatting, once I select that visual, go back over to formatting, you'll see there's things like category labels we could turn on if we wanted to. I could select category labels. It shows up very tiny, but we could actually increase the size of that category label if we want. I can bump that up a little bit. It's a little easier to read. So I can see gas pump one, gas pump two. I could also do things like change the color itself. So right now it's kind of this gray text, but if I want to make it a little bit more bold, I can make it appear black here so it's much easier to read. All right, now the last piece of this that I'd like to show you here is make it so that the colors are brought in dynamically. Right now, they're all kind of the standard Power BI blue that everything defaults to. But what I'd like to do is bring in some of the colors that are inside the data set itself. I'd like to make it so that the data set itself brings back an appropriate color. Now, you'll notice if you go back over to the data view here that I do have a color whenever we look at the pump usage. I do have a column in here for color. Unfortunately, that column is not good enough itself because we actually need to bring this in here as a measure that returns back that color. And right now, it's just in here as a regular field. So there's a little bit of funkiness you have to do to make this work. Basically, we're going to create a calculation on top of that column to make sure it brings back the first value or basically the first non-empty value that we have inside of this field. So it's a little bit of a calculation you'll need to do. To create that calculation, you can go up to the modeling tab. By the way, that modeling tab can be visited either from the data view or from the report view that we're at here. But I'm going to go up to the 
the modeling tab here, and we're going to create a new measure. Now again, the measure that we're doing, the measure that we're creating here is just intended to bring back the color that we have inside of the pump usage table. And so what I have, I'm going to paste in this little bit of code I have here and show it to you for a moment. Basically what we're doing is we're saying bring back the color field, the first color field that you find inside of our data set, inside of our pump usage data set. Because we could have multiple colors, it's got to choose which color to assign to it basically. And that's what we're telling it here is to bring back the first non-null value. All right, once you hit enter on that, that'll bring back the color measure that will now exist. You can see the color measure has a little calculator icon on it. That shows that it is a calculated measure that we just created. And if we want to assi assign that calculated measure to our new visual, we can select the visual again and then actually drag and drop that color measure into the color, or excuse me, into the customized color section here. So if I drag and drop this into the customized color section, you'll see that it actually changes the colors based on what we have inside the data set. You can, of course, make this go full screen using focus mode, and that way you can see it a little better. And that way you can also see, as you do the tooltips or hover above, you get a nice tooltip showing you the X and Y coordinates and how they relate. Now think about this from a business perspective here. Looking at this, it would imply almost that it looks like we get most usage of our pumps that are further away from the gas pump. But what we might find over time, that depending on what time of the year it is, depending on how things like the lottery are doing, you know, when there's a big lottery push where there's a, a large amount in the lottery bucket, you might find some of these gas pumps that are closer to the convenience store actually be more active. In this case, it looks like people try and avoid being close to the gas pump or to the uh, convenience store and just fill, fill up really closest to the road here. So very interesting from a business perspective here as well, how you can analyze it. Now, what we might do from a color perspective is we might use colors like red or maybe even green for ones that are more active. Depends on how you really want to analyze it and maybe other colors for ones that are less active. Now, again, that was all pulled in from the data set itself. It had the color that we wanted to use in each of the rows. You can find that whenever we would go to the data section here. You can see there was a column for color that brought that back exactly how you see it here. Now, a few other things I want to highlight about the enhanced scatter chart very briefly here. If I go ahead and select the enhanced scatter chart one more time, go back over to the paintbrush or the formatting section. And there's a few other things I want to highlight here briefly. We already showed you how you can turn on the category labels. You're seeing the category labels on here right now. The only, only other thing I'd really like to show you here is the crosshair. The crosshair is really kind of a nice feature in here. And if you turn on the crosshair, you can go ahead and just flip it on. When you turn on the crosshair, there's no additional properties to it. But what you'll find is as you go and actually work your way through and hover above the enhanced scatter chart, it shows you what the cross section of values are that you're at. So if you're really looking at X and Y coordinates like we are in this case, the crosshair is actually kind of convenient because it shows you the exact point at where it is in the map or the image in this case. So very interesting here, you can add that cross here. You can always turn it back off if you don't want it on. Easy to turn on and off. Now, one other thing that I'll mention here before we conclude, if you really like the, the traditional scatter chart and how it allows you to do animations, there is no animation for the enhanced scatter chart yet. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, the traditional scatter chart that you have inside of the Power BI visual section here allows you to actually put some kind of animation to the data or play data across time which allows you to really see a cool playing of, uh, across time where I can see how did my business do from 1990 to 2008. I can be able to visualize the path at how it's changed over time. And that's just not in the enhanced scatter chart yet. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you saw in a little bit lengthier one here, but you saw two different ways that you can really leverage and use the enhanced scatter chart. Look forward to seeing you in our next video.